Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Today, we talk Thursday night football. We talk what happens if Deshaun Watson can't play, and just injuries in general in the NFL. Are they pi- they're piling up. Are they any more than every other year? Is it, are we just all prisoners of the moment? That's all coming up on today's edition of The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. All right, let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, the Cleveland Browns back off a bye, but will they have their quarterback? That's a big question. We know other quarterback situations. Anthony Richardson of the Colts, he's out for at least the next four weeks, and Gardner Minshew is the starter there. The Colts have a legitimate backup quarterback. You could potentially even argue that Gardner Minshew gives the Colts a better chance to win than Anthony Richardson at this point in their careers. You can make that argument. Um, The Giants, Daniel Jones has been a disaster, got banged up last game. Uh, They had to go to Tyrod Taylor, or as we were calling him for a couple of weeks here in Cleveland, Tyrod Taylor. I don't know if they're calling him Tyrod or Tyrod these days, but I think he just gave up and went back to Tyrod, even though the correct pronunciation is Tyrod. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, we'll see what happens with that situation. But in Cleveland, it's the biggest deal because, A, um, that's what a lot of you I'm talking to care about. And, B, you're playing the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers, as of right now, are the best team in football. It's hard to argue. You can make a case for Philly. They're defending NFC champs. They're 5-0. and You make you can make a case for the Chiefs. They're defending Super Bowl champs. They haven't been great, but they've been good enough. They deserve benefit of the doubt. They started off a little slow last year. You can make an argument for the Dolphins. They have a historic offense through five games. They've scored more points and had more yards through five games than any team in the history of football. And those are all good teams, very good teams, at least right now. However, to me, in the end, it is clear that the San Francisco 49ers are the best team in football. They are, without any obvious flaws, um, they're they're excellent on all in all three phases. They have a, a young kicker who's getting the job done. I don't think he's missed a kick. Uh, their offense is sensational. They're loaded with talent. Their defense is sensational. They're loaded with talent. Uh, they're well coached on both sides of the ball. Uh, what can you say? I can't come up with anything that the Niners don't do well. That being said, they're not a perfect team. There's no such thing. They're very good offensively and very good defensively, but not flawless. Not completely perfect. Um, well, I say I said what's their obvious. There's, there's no big flaw on the team, but we don't know. Here's what we don't know about the Niners. As great as Brock Purdy's been, we don't know what he'll do if he's in a situation where he has to come back and win a game. He's played from ahead most of the time in his career, and it's a lot easier to play from ahead when the defense doesn't know if you're running or throwing. That's a big advantage that he's had so far in his career. I don't say that to take much away from him. I know there's a lot of talk about how good Brock Purdy is, how good he'd be other places, and so so on and so forth. He's not getting the credit that a lot of quarterbacks get when they succeed. Uh, And Kyle Shanahan's a great coach. He's one of the few special coaches in the league. There aren't many of them. He is a special offensive coach. Uh. So Brock Purdy, so Shanahan is getting a lot of the Brock Purdy credit. I think that's unfair. Does Kyle Shanahan give Brock Purdy an edge that mo- many other quarterbacks do not? Sure, there's no doubt about it. Does Brock Purdy have all the prototypical strengths of a typical NFL great quarterback? He doesn't. But, and I, again, I, let me make clear, I'm not comparing but Tom Brady didn't have a lot of the typical strengths of, of a great NFL quarterback. That's part of the reason why he was drafted as late as he was. But what Tom Brady had that is sometimes hard to measure is elite processing skills. And it appears that Brock Purdy may have that as well. Um, now I still don't think he's as ta- he's still not as talented as Tom Brady, but Tom Brady didn't blow anybody off the page with his natural talent. 
So, and again, I, I'm not saying that Brock Purdy's as good as Tom Brady. Uh, but Brock Purdy, to me, is a good quarterback. Now, he's got to do it for longer before we start putting him in the in the top group, but it's hard to argue with what he's done so far. Yes, he has advantages, including coaching, including talent around him that that boost him up. But how much? I guess we'll we'll find out as time goes on, as his career goes on. But uh, I think he deserves a lot of credit. <clears throat> Circling it back to the Browns, we'll have to play this, what appears to be a juggernaut in San Francisco. Uh, Deshaun Watson, he was injured for their last game against Baltimore. During the week, he barely practiced, leading into the Baltimore game two Sundays ago. On Friday, he didn't practice at all, and we all assumed that he was not going to play. However, after practice last Friday, or two Fridays ago, um, Deshaun Watson told Mary Kay Cabot from Cleveland.com <clears throat> that he was good to go, um, that he was going to play. I shouldn't say that he was good to go, but he she he said she was good. She he told her that she was going to play, that he was going to play. Then Sunday came and he couldn't go. Okay, he built up the expectations by telling Mary Kay he was going to play. Had he not told her that, we probably would have all just assumed he wasn't, and then when he did, it wouldn't be a big deal. On Monday. Kevin Stefanski said he was cleared by the doctors, but he felt he couldn't go. It was, in his mind, a, a harmless comment, but because Kevin Stefanski says nothing most of the time, the comment had many of us scratching our heads. And in the end, Andrew Berry that week, the GM of the Browns, tried to clear up you know, what was said. And then Andrew Berry, in the middle of last week, a week ago, said, oh, yeah, we expect uh, Deshaun Watson to play. Well, spin forward to this week. <clears throat> Deshaun Watson did not practice on Monday. The team practices this afternoon, so we'll see if he practices today. But if he doesn't, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to feel like he's not going to play again this Sunday. And if he doesn't, there's a couple things. First of all, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, the fifth-round pick, out of UCLA looked like he was completely unprepared to play in the NFL. And that was against Baltimore. Good, good team. Uh, what's he going to look like against San Francisco? The Browns right at the end of the preseason brought in PJ Walker. I call him a veteran. He, you know, I mean, he's a young veteran or an inexperienced veteran, but he is a veteran. He's been in the league for some time. So what do the Browns do? PJ Walker's thrown about 220 NFL passes. DTR thrown whatever it was last week, 30. Can't remember exactly how many. What should the Browns do? I'll tell you in a second. First, I want to let you know to get extra value this football season with Bet River Squares. Win up to $10,000 in bonus money. 10000 bucks. It's pretty good. Bet $10 in same game parlays on any game with the Squares icon to earn a square. Check out the Bet Rivers site. It, it really is the best out there. It's so easy to use. I, I have it up right now. I clicked on the Browns tab. Whatever state you're in, it, 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 it has a tab for your teams. As of this moment, at Bet Rivers on the sports book, the Browns are plus five and a half. They opened up plus four and a half. They are now plus five and a half. Uh, Browns remain plus 250 at Bet Rivers to win the AFC North as the second choice behind the Ravens, but they're getting four, five and a half. Now, part of that is <clears throat> the unknown about the Sean Watson status. I think the, the, the line will move probably today when we see what happens one way or the other with the, whether the, if the Sean Watson gets a full practice in, maybe the line goes down or maybe it stays. I don't know. I mean, the Niners look so good right now. It might just stay at five and a half, even with Watson. But if at some point the Sean Watson is announced out for this week, that line's going to go up. I would think maybe even to double digits, but who should play? There was a report yesterday by uh, Brad Stainbrook. I give Brad a little credit. He's uh, a young guy. I, I I had never even heard of him two years ago. 
young guy coming up in the in the Browns uh, beat reporter ranks, and he's uh, he's hit on a few stories. He definitely has a, a connection. There's definitely a source that he's got, and he reported yesterday that uh, PJ Walker would start over DTR if Deshaun Watson can't go. What I don't understand about that, and, I, and that's fine, if they think, if ultimately, if if uh, Kevin Stefanski thinks PJ Walker gives you a better chance to win, especially against a, a team like San Francisco, then then okay. What I don't understand is. <clears throat> When you were evaluating your quarterbacks this summer and you decided to move on from Josh Dobbs, and don't get me wrong, I've said this consistently, Josh Dobbs is not that good a quarterback. I don't know that he's any better than P.J. Walker, probably a little better, but not significantly. He doesn't move the needle. He's not really a starting quarterback. He shouldn't be. He started for Arizona. He's been serviceable. I'll give him that, but I, I don't look at him. Nobody wants Josh Dobbs as their starting quarterback. Great guy by all accounts. A uh, brilliant guy by all accounts. Nothing not to like about him. He's just not a very good quarterback. He is a quality backup. But he had some experience in the league. What, if the Browns were going to give up, and, and not give up long term, but give up short term on DTR, if he was that unprepared to play, why did you trade the veteran away for a fifth round pick? It's not like you couldn't live without that fifth round pick they got for Josh Dobbs. So that, that, that's, a, I think, a fair criticism of management here. Listen, everybody's job's on the line right now for the Browns, except for Deshaun Watson because he's got guaranteed money. But if this season goes badly, Kevin Stavansky should be and I think will be fired. Andrew Berry should be and I think will be fired. You're blowing it up. I mean, you know. I think my, I think if the season goes badly, Miles Garrett's looking for a trade. Nick Chubb is going at, at the end of the year. He's a free agent. Uh, I don't think he's coming back. There, you're probably moving on from Amari Cooper. There's going to be a huge overhaul this season. And Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Berry, as I assume as a tandem, decided that DTR, because he played well in the preseason and they're watching him in practice every day, we can't. But they said he's good enough to be a backup quarterback. And after one poor game that they didn't have him ready for and he didn't have himself ready for, now they've decided, okay, we're going to go with this journeyman veteran when we already had a veteran who had been in our system a while who's a little better than this journeyman veteran. What does that say about their ability to talent evaluate? It doesn't say a lot. It doesn't say anything good. Let's face it, the Browns need Deshaun Watson to have any chance of beating San Francisco. There is virtually no chance of the Browns winning this game with P.J. Walker or DTR. I, You know, I don't think there's a... To me, the spread on this game, whether it's DTR or P.J. Walker, is not going to be different. If they're going to be a uh, 11 point f- underdog with one, they'll be an 11 point underdog with the other. There's no sig- discernible difference between the two. The Browns have almost no chance of winning this game with either of those guys. But if Deshaun Watson can play and he's, you know, 90%, and the fact that two weeks ago they thought he was going to play up until the last minute, you know, it makes me think that. Either he should go or he's had a setback. And I guess we'll find out this afternoon. However, if Deshaun Watson is able to do that, then I think the Browns have a legitimate chance. They're at home. Uh, It's tough for West Coast teams playing uh, East Coast or Eastern time zone. One o'clock games. Those are tricky for the West Coast team. The Browns are coming off a bye. So they should be fairly fresh. And the Browns are, at least defensively, are a very physical team. Their defense has been as good as any right there with San Fran and these other teams that have played well defensively. So I think the Browns can hang in there and potentially pull a slight upset if Deshaun Watson plays and he's relatively healthy. But they have no no chance without him. None. There's no way they win this game without him. In fact, they're most they're more likely, in my opinion, to be shut out If Watson doesn't play, then win the game, which is crazy. Should never be the case in the NFL, but that's how I feel about it. All right, final thing I want to hit on, a little Thursday night football action. 
Thursday night football game this week is the Broncos and the Chiefs. Like many of the other Thursday night games recently, it's not a great game. However, from a betting perspective, let's look at the Bet Rivers sports book line on this game. As of this moment, the Chiefs are a 10 and a half point favorite um, in the game. The over under is 47 and a half. Uh, so will the Chiefs cover? Will they beat the Broncos by 10 and a half? Um, the Chiefs offense this year has not fully hit its stride. Travis Kelsey's a little banged up. I mean, the Chiefs have only scored more than 27 points once so far this year. They, they For opener, they lost to the Lions. They scored 20, scored 17 against Jacksonville, 23 against the Jets, and 27 against Minnesota. They scored 41 in their win over the terrible Bears. Now, the Broncos are also terrible. And so, even though the Chiefs have hit have not hit their stride yet offensively, I think they will get it going against a really bad team this week. Now, I'm a little nervous about Travis Kelsey's situation. And if Travis Kelsey ultimately doesn't play tomorrow, then it might change my mind. However, knowing his toughness, the fact that he got back in the game last week makes me think Travis Kelsey's going to play. He was able to practice a little bit. So I am going to lay the 10 and a half with the Chiefs, and I will I will take the over uh, because I think the Chiefs will score a lot of points in this game. So I don't need the Broncos to score that much. And their offense, the Broncos' offense isn't terrible. Their defense is terrible. Their offense is not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, and they should have Javante Williams back this week, giving them a full complement of healthy players on the offensive side of the ball. So there, there's my pick for the Thursday night game. I continue to dominate the Bet Rivers uh, experts' picks. I think I have a three and a half game lead over Mark Schlereth through five weeks. I'm getting a little cocky right now, but there's a long way to go. And ultimately, those guys all have a chance to move past me. But not yet, my friends. Not yet. Thanks to all of you for listening and watching, as always. Thanks to Brian Monzo for producing. I'll talk to you next time. We may have a Hall of Fame guest on the Friday podcast. So you'll see. Uh, all right. Thanks again to everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Where else? But right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. See you, everybody. 